Well, 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 brother. Set against the stark beauty of the Arizona desert, the film immerses viewers in the life of Cable Hogue, a prospector who finds himself alone after being abandoned by his partners. In his struggle for survival, he stumbles upon a hidden natural spring, a discovery that transforms his fate. Excited by the prospect of establishing a stagecoach station, he envisions a bustling future. The characters that cross his path, including a spirited woman and a wily traveler, deepen the narrative, revealing the joys and sorrows of frontier life. As Cable navigates his newfound challenges, the landscape itself becomes a character, reflecting his hopes and disappointments. Each scene is crafted to draw the audience into a world where excitement and uncertainty walk hand in hand. The film's tone encapsulates both the thrill of discovery and the bittersweet nature of solitude, making for an engaging cinematic experience. Wise and bountiful God was, put breasts on a woman. Set in the American West, the film is a rare gem in the Western genre, known for its unique approach and storytelling. With a focus on character development and humor rather than the typical violence, the movie follows the journey of Cable Hogue, a prospector searching for his fortune in the desert. Alongside him are Hildy, a local prostitute with a big dream of a life in San Francisco, and Joshua, a cunning fake preacher who adds his own twist to the tale. As their paths intertwine, a comedic and subtly crafted narrative unfolds, showcasing the quirks and challenges of life in the rugged landscapes of the Wild West. Starring Jason Robards, Stella Stevens, and David Warner, the film offers a refreshing take on the classic Western setting, exploring themes of friendship, ambition, and the resilience of the human spirit. Filmed in the Nevada desert, the production faced poor weather, Peckinpah's heavy drinking, and numerous crew firings, resulting in a chaotic shoot. The production went 19 days over schedule and $3 million over budget, damaging Peckinpah's career and relationship with Warner Brothers. True Samaritan. Don't push your luck, Josh. Peckinpah's behavior, including alcohol abuse, made him difficult to work with leading to limited future directing opportunities. Jerry Goldsmith composed the score, with songs by Richard Gillis, each character having a unique theme. It's nothing, my friend, riding good health with my blessing. I hate to go in among them. Despite having more renowned works, the director often expressed a deep affection for this film, calling it his most beloved creation. When Warner Brothers presented a rough cut to distributors, the initial reception was negative, causing concern about its future. Many distributors did not see the potential, doubting its appeal and commercial viability. However, after the film was released, audience reactions shifted dramatically. Viewers began to embrace the unique storytelling and character depth, which resonated well with them. This change in reception highlighted how perceptions can evolve over time revealing a deeper appreciation for the film's themes and artistry. The director's fondness for this work underscores the emotional connection he felt, reinforcing the idea that sometimes a creator's most personal projects may not align with commercial expectations, but can still find a dedicated audience. God cometh on the children of disobedience. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 6. Amen. Warner Brothers released the film with minimal promotional effort, which contributed to its underperformance at the box office, despite its artistic quality. This lack of marketing likely overshadowed the unique storytelling and strong performances that characterized the project. Stella Stevens emerged as the first choice for the role of Hildy, although she harbored doubts about taking on the part. Her initial hesitation did not deter director Sam Peckinpah, who remained adamant about casting her, recognizing her talent and suitability for the character. On the other hand, David Warner was brought on board despite facing his own challenges. He struggled with vertigo and experienced panic when it came to flying, which added an extra layer of complexity to his participation in the project. These casting decisions were crucial as they shaped the dynamics of the film, highlighting the dedication and commitment of the actors involved 
even in the face of personal fears and uncertainties. Here. What life by me? Stella Stevens adored working with Jason Robards but found David Warner, new to American films, a bit strange. Stevens disagreed with Peckinpah's view of the film as a comedy, seeing it more as a love story with comedic elements. Stevens enjoyed the experience of collaborating with the seasoned actor Robards, appreciating his talent and professionalism on set. However, her interactions with David Warner, a fresh face in American cinema, left her feeling somewhat perplexed due to his different approach to acting. Despite these varied dynamics, Stevens remained dedicated to her role in the film, delivering a nuanced performance that captured the essence of a love story intertwined with humor. The contrast between her perspectives and those of Peckinpah added depth to the film, showcasing different interpretations that enriched its overall narrative. Stevens' presence brought a unique blend of warmth and wit to the screen, enhancing the film's portrayal of love and laughter in a captivating manner. Why? I uh, guess you found one of those uh, rich... Peckinpah's reputation for being challenging to work with stemmed from his volatile personality, fueled by alcohol and frustration with studios. Despite this, he was a talented director known for his unique vision. In the film, Hoag's first meeting with Hildy is a pivotal moment that sets the tone for their relationship and the story's development, as he is immediately drawn to her beauty. This encounter foreshadows the complexity and depth of their connection as the narrative unfolds, highlighting themes of love, longing, and the complexities of human relationships. Throughout the movie, Peckinpah's directorial style and the chemistry between the characters bring the story to life, creating a compelling and memorable viewing experience. Stella Stevens' condition, as of the recording, finds her confined to an Alzheimer unit in California, a sad contrast to her vibrant role in the film. Stevens' portrayal in the movie showcased her talent and charisma, drawing audiences into a world of Western adventure and drama. The juxtaposition between her past on-screen vitality and her current situation serves as a poignant reminder of the effects of time and life's unpredictable turns. Despite her current circumstances, Stevens' performance in the film continues to resonate with viewers, capturing a moment frozen in time when her talent shone brightly on the silver screen. The emotional depth she brought to her character lingers, a testament to her enduring impact on the world of cinema. I'll never drive again, do you hear? The wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. In the 1970 movie, a character named Cable Hogue embarks on a captivating journey to seek his fortune in the desert. Set in a time when the West was still wild and untamed, this film captures the essence of resilience and adventure. The story unfolds in an era of vast landscapes and rugged individualism, where survival depends on wit and grit. Join Cable Hogue as he navigates the challenges of the frontier and discovers the true meaning of friendship and triumph. Explore the untamed wilderness alongside this iconic character and witness a tale of courage and determination that transcends time. Step into the world of Cable Hogue, where every choice defines destiny and every moment is a test of character. Experience the thrill of the Wild West in all its glory and embark on a journey that will stay with you long after the credits roll. Things a thriving community filled with the faith. Amen. Oh, How much of this land is yours? When assembling the cast for the 1970 movie, The Ballad of Cable Hogue, the casting process involved meticulous selection of key actors for their roles. Insight Jason Robards was chosen for the lead role after a compelling audition that showcased his versatility and depth as an actor. Insight, Stella Stevens' chemistry test with Robards sealed her casting as the female lead, her charisma shining on screen. Insight David Warner's audition impressed the casting directors with his nuanced approach earning him the role of the villain in the film. Insight, L.Q. Jones' pivotal moment in auditions, captured the essence of his character, solidifying his spot in the cast as a supporting actor.
Directorial Vision Sam Peckinpah, the director of the 1970 movie The Ballad of Cable Hoag, had a unique approach to bringing the story to life. Influenced by classic Hollywood westerns, Peckinpah blended elements of humor, drama, and romance in his signature style. Known for his gritty realism and attention to detail, Peckinpah collaborated closely with the cast and crew to capture authentic performances and settings. By infusing the film with a touch of nostalgia and a modern sensibility, Peckinpah created a timeless western that resonated with audiences then and continues to do so today. Come on and have a drink. During the production of the 1970 movie The Ballad of Cable Hogue, the set design team meticulously recreated a western town from the 1900s. They constructed realistic saloons, a general store, and dusty streets to transport viewers back in time. For locations, filming took place in the scorching Arizona desert, providing an authentic backdrop for the film's storyline. The harsh desert environment posed logistical challenges, such as extreme temperatures, and limited access to amenities. To overcome these challenges, the crew had to adapt by setting up cooling stations and ensuring everyone stayed hydrated. Additionally, they implemented innovative techniques like using special effects to create realistic mirages and enhance the desert landscape. Overall, the production of The Ballad of Cable Hoag was a testament to creativity and perseverance in the face of challenging filming condition. What's all this? What in the hell is that? The creation of the score and soundtrack for the 1970 film The Ballad of Cable Hoag involved a distinct blend of musical elements that enhanced the film's narrative and emotional tone. Composed by Jerry Goldsmith, the music captures the essence of the film's setting and characters. Goldsmith, known for his versatile scoring, crafted a soundtrack that complements the film's mix of humor, drama, and the rugged Western environment. The film's score incorporates traditional Western motifs with a unique twist, reflecting both the film's comedic and dramatic moments. Goldsmith's use of instrumental textures and melodies helps to emphasize the protagonist's journey and the stark landscape of the Old West. The music mirrors the emotional highs and lows of Cable Hogue's story, enhancing the audience's connection to the characters and their struggles. Goldsmith's approach was to blend orchestral elements with folk influences, providing a musical backdrop that resonates with the film's period setting and emotional depth. The soundtrack includes memorable themes that underscore key moments, adding to the overall cinematic experience. This integration of music and narrative demonstrates how a well-crafted score can deeply influence a film's storytelling and emotional impact. Oh, would you? Of course. That's the first man I doubt. <laughs> In the 1970 movie The Ballad of Cable Hoag, one of the most iconic scenes is when Cable Hoag discovers the spring in the desert. The direction captures his astonishment as he finds water in the barren land, emphasizing the theme of hope and resilience. The performance by actor Jason Roberts conveys Hoag's joy and longing for a new beginning, drawing the audience into his emotional journey. Cinematography plays a crucial role in this scene showcasing the vast desert landscape contrasted with the lush oasis created by the spring. The use of wide shots and close-ups accentuates the significance of this discovery for Hogue and the impact it will have on his life. Filmmaker Sam Peckinpah described this scene as pivotal in showcasing the character's transformation and his connection to the land. Robards credited Peckinpah's vision and guidance in bringing out the depth of Hogue's emotions in this moment. Overall, this iconic scene resonates with audiences for its themes of hope, renewal, and the power of nature to change one's destiny. Another month paid in full. No, no banks for me. The Ballad of Cable Hogue, a 1970 movie, captivated audiences with its tale of resilience and redemption. The film, set in the American West, touched on themes of hope, betrayal, and the pursuit of dreams. Its portrayal of the frontier spirit resonated with viewers, 
sparking conversations about the human experience and the quest for personal fulfillment. Through its unique characters and engaging storyline, the movie left a lasting impact on popular culture, influencing later Western films and inspiring new perspectives on the genre. The Ballad of Cable Hogue remains a classic example of storytelling that explores timeless themes of love, survival, and the search for meaning in a changing world. The Lord works in many ways. Sometimes when he is. The 1970 movie, The Ballad of Cable Hogue, received mixed critical reception upon its release. While some critics praised its unique blend of comedy and drama, others found it lacking in substance. Audience reactions were similarly varied, with some viewers enjoying the film's humor and performances, while others felt it was slow paced and meandering. Despite these mixed reviews, the movie did receive recognition in the form of a nomination for the Golden Globe Award for Best Actor, Musical or Comedy for its star, Jason Robards. This nomination signaled that the performance was noteworthy and stood out among the year's comedic performances. For those involved in the film, this accolade would have been validation of their work and talent showing that their efforts were appreciated by industry professionals. It would have also likely brought more attention to the film and its cast potentially opening up more opportunities for future projects. Overall, while the critical reception was not entirely favorable, the nomination for a prestigious award like the Golden Globe would have been a significant achievement for those involved in making the Ballad of Cable Hogue. In the making of the Ballad of Cable Hogue, the production had several memorable behind-the-scenes moments. For instance, during the desert scenes, the cast and crew faced intense heat and challenging conditions. Jason Roberts, who played Cable Hogue, once joked about the temperature saying he felt like he was roasting in an oven. The crew had to work around extreme weather, often battling sandstorms that made shooting difficult, Lieutenant the film's director. Sam Peckinpah was known for his unconventional method. One day, while filming a scene involving a horse and a river, Peckinpah decided to take an impromptu swim himself to demonstrate how he wanted the scene to look. This spontaneous action left the cast in awe of his dedication and willingness to get involved in every aspect of the production. Additionally, the film's cinematographer, Lucien Ballard, had to navigate the difficulties of filming in the remote desert locations. To capture the vastness of the landscape, Ballard used wide-angle lenses but this required him to set up complex camera rigs that often took hours to assemble. Despite the challenges, Ballard's work was instrumental in creating the film's distinctive visual style. The camaraderie among the cast was also a highlight. Roberts, Stella Stevens, and David Warner formed a close bond during filming, sharing stories, and jokes around the campfire after a long day. These moments of levity helped them endure the tough conditions and contributed to the film's authentic feel. The production was not without its challenges, but these behind-the-scenes experiences played a significant role in shaping the final product. The dedication of the cast and crew, combined with the harsh desert environment, made the film an unforgettable experience for everyone involved. It is good. Hold up there, preacher. That'll be 50 cents. The Ballad of Cable Hogue, released in 1970, holds a significant place in film history as a unique blend of genres, combining elements of Western, comedy, and drama. Its influence on future filmmaking can be seen in its unconventional storytelling and character-driven narrative. The movie inspired a wave of filmmakers to experiment with genre boundaries and storytelling techniques, paving the way for a new generation of cinema that pushed creative boundaries. The Ballad of Cable Hogue's legacy is evident in its enduring impact on the art of filmmaking, continuing to inspire filmmakers to think outside the box and create original, thought-provoking works that challenge traditional norms and conventions. <laughs> While watching The Ballad of Cable Hogue, many viewers have been transported back to the gritty charm of the Wild West. This timeless movie has resonated with audiences, evoking emotions 
and memories of a bygone era. Have you found yourself reminiscing about the characters, the setting, or the storyline? Share your thoughts with us and engage in a lively discussion about how this film has left its mark on your cinematic journey. Your experiences and insights are valuable and can inspire others to explore the magic of cinema. Let's relive the magic of the Ballad of Cable Hogue together. Join the conversation, like, share, and subscribe for more cinematic exploration. You're gonna head back out through them hills.